and the 2021 game of the year is it takes two what <laughs> There have been many games announced to be released this year and some to be announced for 2023, so let's do another anticipated games list. However, by the time I am writing this script, I am currently working on my games I played in 2021 list. So games that will be released in February and March won't be on here such as Gran Turismo 7. I also won't be putting any ports or remasters such as Chrono Cross and Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Only new releases. At any rate, let's begin. Deciding on who won E3 2021 was no competition, since Nintendo hyped the crap out of many fans with game announcements that people care about. And at the end of the Direct, Nintendo finally gave us another announcement on the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And I'm gonna call it that since we have no full proof that Breath of the Wild 2 will be its official title. Truthfully, I am not the biggest fan of the Zelda series, but seeing this trailer, hearing my music, this is the most hype I've ever had for a Zelda game. The overworld is like the first game, expansive and beautiful, but now they've truly expanded it so that you'll be exploring the clouds above Hyrule. Not much I can say, there's only two trailers released and not enough information I can give that can make this segment longer, but nonetheless, I am so excited for more news on this sequel whenever Nintendo decides to do so. Splatoon is not only one of my favorite games on the Wii U, but one of my favorite games of all time. For some reason, I haven't gotten the chance to play Splatoon 2, but I am pretty hyped for Splatoon 3. From the first game trailer, we originally thought that Splatoon 3 would take place in a post-apocalyptic setting, though that didn't appear to be the case with the trailers afterwards. Gameplay is exactly like the first two games, but like the second game, Splatoon 3 has new character customization options and introduces a pet. In the most recent Nintendo Direct, they announced the Salmon Run, which is a pretty cool feature. It will be pretty hard for me to get this game considering there are many other games I'm planning on getting, although I will try and at least get it. I'm one person who thinks the Game Awards 2021 wasn't that bad, but I question the awards the games got and most of the new announcements are uninteresting to say the least. One of the more interesting announcements to me is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. This game will be an open world game taking place in Metropolis when Brainiac is taking control of the entire Justice League and now the Suicide Squad are Earth's last line of defense. This game is being made by the creators of the Batman Arkham series, which is a successful franchise, so I'm bound to see how this game will turn out. And the fact that it is taking place in establishing the Arkham games is so much more intriguing. Not only that, but the game will feature local multiplayer, so playing this game with friends, we will truly be the Suicide Squad saving humanity from the possessed protectors of Earth. The only game that returns from my top 5 most anticipated Nintendo Switch games list, though that's not a surprise since the other 4 games were all released back last year, and because no new trailers are out and mention anything I said back in my anticipated Switch games list, I ain't gonna be talking about them again here. I'll put a link down in the description for my top 5 most anticipated Nintendo Switch games list for news on this game. So let's move onward. Final Fantasy XVI released its first trailer back in 2020, and we haven't gotten any more trailers of the game since then. I swear to god, hopefully it doesn't end up in development hell like Metroid Prime 4 is right now. But from the looks of the gameplay, the style from 15 and the remake of 7 will be making a grand return to this game. 
What we know of other characters so far, the main protagonist will go by the name of Clive Rosfield, who is the firstborn son of the Archduke of the Grand Duchy of Rosaria, and he has a little brother named Joshua, and he is chosen to inherit the status as the Dominant of Phoenix, who is a summon, as the game calls them, an icon. The game also looks marvelously beautiful, especially since it's exclusively on PS5, one of the absolute hardest consoles to find now. Sadly, while it's a PlayStation 5 exclusive only, and the fact I probably won't get the console soon, that will not stop me from getting hype for the next mainline game and one of my favorite video game franchises of all time. Bayonetta 3 was announced all the way back in the Game Awards 2017, and after that we haven't gotten any news on the game since until the Nintendo Direct in September of 2021. First off, I want to discuss Bayonetta's new redesign. Oh my god, this femme fatale is so much more beautiful. Every Bayonetta game has a different design for Bayonetta, with Bayonetta 2 having the most recognizable, and Bayonetta 1 having my personal favorite one. But Bayonetta 3's design is a nice little reference to Bayo when she was a kid in the first game. The game is fun too. Despite having the same combat style as the first two games, Hideki Kamiya, known for his work like Devil May Cry, Beautiful Joe, and even Bayonetta, personally recommended players to play Bayonetta 1 and 2 before playing 3, since it'll be more of a better experience. Don't worry, Kamiya-san, I'll get around to it. Rooster Teeth was one of my favorite YouTube channels growing up as a kid. I've had fun watching series like Rage Quit, Shenanigans, Schooled, and even originally uploaded their Minecraft Let's Play on their channel. They've also made official shows like Red vs. Blue, Camp Camp, and Genlock. But their most infamous show is Ruby, and it's my favorite series RT has ever made. I watched the show back in 2020 and I grew addicted to the show, and when I heard that Rooster Teeth would be collaborating with Wave Forward and Arc Systems to create a brand new Ruby game, I thought, Oh my god, a Ruby fighting game in the style of Blaze Blue and Persona 4 Arena? Nope. Ruby Arabelle will be taking place in Volume 7 during that montage scene in Volume 7 Episode 5 Sparks, and so far the gameplay looks promising. The game will be an indie 2D platformer metrovania in Mistala games such as Shantae and Kirby. There will be a new team of Huntresses who will be, I believe to be, a rival team of Team Ruby and Juniper, Team Briar. Members being Bianca, Rowan, Ivy, and Ruda. And their designs so far look mega flashy. There's not much I can truly say about this game since there's only one trailer, so... This will be the day we're waiting for, I guess? Recently, I've been getting super addicted to Spider-Man. I've played the entirety of the amazing Spider-Man video game on PS3 from start to finish in January, and it's so far my favorite game I played in 2022. I've also been getting interested in Insomniac's Spider-Man 2018 game. It's such a shame that I don't have a PS4 or PS5 because I want to play this game badly. Spider-Man Miles Morales was released back in 2020 on PS4 and PS5, and it was another awesome Spider-Man game that lived up to the hype. Let's just hope a sequel lives up to it. Yeah, and now you know why this list is called the top 10 most anticipated games for 2022 and 2023. The only game in this list to be released next year, I am so excited for the sequel. Peter and Miles will both be in the game and so would Venom who will play a big major role in the story. But I would also like to see villains like Carnage, Green Goblin and the Lizard. But I would also like to see returning villains like Rhino, Scorpion, Electro Taskmaster, and Dr. Octopus. And if I were to choose another spider hero to join Peter Miles, assuming if Insomniac does, I would choose Spider-Gwen, living up to the hype. It's such a shame that we have to wait a full year. Xenoblade Chronicles is one Nintendo series I wanted to get into for a couple years now. Xenoblade Chronicles is regarded as one of the greatest games of all time by most people. Xenoblade Chronicles X is many fans, but got completely overshadowed by the first game. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is the most divisive game in the series, 
due to it being a lot more anime, but it does have a deep, sad, and compelling story with my favorite soundtrack in video game history. And Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition improves a lot of features from the first game. So yeah, you can tell how hyped I was when Xenoblade 3 was announced at the end of Nintendo's recent Direct. Using the engine from Xenoblade 2 and the remaster, 3 looks absolutely gorgeous. Now then, a lot of characters play the flute for some reason, but Tetsuya Takahashi, the executive director, says this. The music in this game maintains the unique Xenoblade Chronicles touch while also taking on a new challenge, namely, that of integrating a flute-based melody as its motive. The flute is actually one of the key themes in this game. So apparently, the music will mainly rely on flute, and I mean, it makes sense. Xenoblade 1, X, and the remaster have a lot of rock, while Xenoblade 2 has rock combined with orchestra. As for the gameplay, we do see the overall, but the combat is nowhere to be found. But it is the first trailer, so I'll let it slide. Remember when the gameplay shown for the first trailer for Fire Emblem 3 Houses look like a mobile game? <laughs> Anyways, I could say more, but considering the trailer was just dropped recently, I don't want to ramble on. So let's just move onward. But before we reach number 1, let's take a look at some honorable mentions. Nintendo Switch Sports. Having a Wii Sports based game on Switch I originally thought was lazy but now I don't think it is... Nice? God of War Ragnarok. I'm getting a bit more interested in the God of War series and let's hope Ragnarok holds up to the hype. Wonder Woman. One of the big three of the DCU getting her own game? I'm cool with it. Mario Strikers Battle League. Mario Strikers is back and looking better than ever. Fire Emblem Warriors Free Hopes. Dude, I'm gonna be getting free houses first, at least give me some time before hyping me up. And Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. At least Nintendo is finally reviving one of her decade and overall dead franchises. Now let's just hope they can revive F-Zero. What I hate about the Sonic fanbase now is how they are already talking about the flaws of Sonic Frontiers months before the game is officially released. I get it, alright? Sonic Forces was the last mainline Sonic game and it ended up as either mediocre or one of the worst games in the series in some people's opinions. And Sonic Colors Ultimate was one of the worst remasters of 2021. And it's fine to have skepticisms about the game, but in my eyes, I believe that Sonic Frontier will end up being a great game if Sonic Team takes their time, unlike what they did with Forces, and rush the game entirely. Frontiers will be Sonic's first attempt at an open world game, taking place on the Starfall Islands. The game looks absolutely beautiful with all the environments and the architecture, and the story looks as though it will be dark, but considering throughout the past decade Sonic Team turned Sonic as nothing more than a comedy series, I'm not gonna hold my breath on that. But the game will actually be written by Ian Flynn, the writer of Sonic comics since issue 160 instead of Pontek and Grab, and thank god for that. I cannot wait till we see some gameplay of Frontiers, see what it will look like, and I am all for Sonic trying out new different things. I'm user one Campbell, and honestly, I don't believe Sonic Frontiers will be Sonic's last attempt at making the series good again, because believe me, if that was the case, Sonic 06 would have killed up the series years ago.
13. 